KFAR. This is a show called Patriots Lament. I'm Steve Floyd, the monkey behind the machine. Joining me here in the studio, of course, uh, Josh Bennett from uh, Bighorn Enterprises. You already heard uh, their ad there at the top of the hour. For all of your trucking and construction needs, make sure you call Bighorn at 451-7310. Also joining us here in the studio is Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical. Now, uh, the FBI may be watching people who are preparing for potential danger and for possible end game scenarios. You know what? Don't let the fact that they are out there looking to watch you be something that would deter you from going over there to Far North Tactical. In fact, it may be all the more reason to go because in order for the FBI to get their list, you have to have people complying with it. And you know what? Don't comply. Head on over there to Far North and uh, get the stuff you need to be prepared for the future. Whether you're talking about uh, food storage or whether you're talking about firearms, they've got guns. They've got handguns, shotguns, long guns. They've also got uh, body armor over there. Aaron, did you want to say something? You're leaning in toward the microphone like you, you wanted to say something. I just want everyone to bring their ID and leave it and make it easy. <laughs> okay, so now you're saying you're going to comply? Well, of course. All right. I have to do my civic duties. All right, uh, make sure you bring your papers. Far North Tactical over there at the corner of 8th and Lacey. It's the old uh, log building there, uh, Blondie's old building. So make sure you find that downtown in Fairbanks. Uh, yeah, Josh, you've got a, a story there in front of you about uh, the latest poll there that is released that is showing that only 17% of Americans at large right now believe that the United States government actually has the consent of the governed. That uh, that basically makes us uh, what they're calling pre-revolutionary. What does that mean? Well, it was actually a Rasmussen poll, and uh, that's down from 23%. I think it's in- interesting the way they put it in here. It's uh, a foundational principle contained in the Declaration of Independence, the consent of the governed. Right now, Americans feel that only 17% of Americans feel that the government has our consent to do what they're doing. Congress approval rating is at 6% right now. And 46% of the people believe that all politicians are corrupt, with only 29% believe otherwise. At the end of this uh, article here, it says, Cadell's observations last November that a sea of anger is churning among Americans who want to take back their country. The nation stood on the brink of pre-revolutionary moments. I, is that is that something that should scare us, or is that something that should encourage us? I mean, is that something that, I mean, when you've got people that are, quote, governing us, I love uh, Senator Murkowski and how she said that she couldn't get ready to get back to Washington, D.C. to resume her task of, of governing us. And then she made another comment uh, just, what, a week ago, two weeks ago, where she once again said that, uh, that like the deadlock and the, the refusal to compromise, that's no way to govern is it, when you've got people, quote, governing us that do not have our consent, what does that make it? Tyranny. I can't think of another word for it. I mean, dictatorship is the same. I mean, that, that, this, this story right here is the base of what this show is about. We uh, talk about founding fathers and this and that. What we're, we're really trying to point out is we are living in tyranny right now. If we were in 1770s, there would be a war going on because the King George, according to the colonists, had it made under King George, and they started a war. We have a federal government. We just listened to Ron Paul talk some about it. That is in every aspect of our life, finding every aspect of our life, regulating every aspect of our life, telling people to turn in their neighbors, turning the people against each other, constantly pitting us against each other to fight Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat, all the while they're raping us, pillaging us, and stealing from us at a level that's never been seen before in the history of the world. The the world's never seen anything like our government. Our government is stealing more money, more wealth, more from our posterity than all the countries, every nation, every civilization combined till now. There's never been such thing, any such thing as $16 trillion debt before in history, anywhere. If you do look at history, though, I'd like to point out no. that our government is definitely poised for atrocities. Some would say yeah. that atrocities are already happening under our government. 
I'm, well, I don't know. Would you say the TSA is committing atrocities now when they you try to board an airplane and they strip you naked if they don't like something you say or they don't like the way you look or for no reason at all? You yeah. don't want to have a naked body scan? You're going down. Where is the crossover to where people start to die? It always happens. Well, always people already are always dying. Will. I mean, we killed the Branch Davidians. Well, and, and look at reason? that guy just a couple months ago, the Marine, who they, they served a search warrant on the wrong house, and he, not knowing who these armed people were breaking into his house, grabbed his gun, and they shot him, uh, what, 60 times? They hit him 60 times, yeah. They probably shot at him more. Cause 72? They're, yeah. Well, they had to make sure that they killed him because, you know. Wouldn't want to actually have to deal with a lawsuit afterwards. If you have no witnesses. No, exactly. The point is we're at a moment in time. I mean, I really hope that Ron Paul wins. I don't think the quote-unquote powers that be will ever let it happen. You listen to uh, the great conservative mind, the big constitutionalist, Rush Limbaugh, and he tore into Ron Paul the other day. Why? What's he afraid of? I mean, all these constitutionalists, what does Ron Paul say that's unconstitutional? Absolutely nothing. Glenn Beck tore into him yesterday because of his policies of the Middle East. Really? I would say that Israel would be a lot better off, the country of Israel would be way better off if we would get our butts out of their business. How did they lose the war against Hezbollah a couple years ago in 2006? It wasn't because Israel wasn't capable of demolishing Hezbollah, because we held them back. Ron Paul's right. We need to get out of foreign entanglements, which is the same thing that Jefferson said. Thomas Jefferson, a founding father, wrote the Declaration of Independence. The same thing that George Washington said, the first president of the United States, and the best one, in my opinion. Well, They are idiots. One of, yeah, they're fools. <laughs> you want to say that Ron Paul's a fool? He is saying the exact, he said some things word for word the founding father said 200 and some odd years ago, and he's a fool? then that means the Founding Fathers were fools. They said stay out of foreign entanglements. They said be friends with all foreign countries. Try to be friends with everyone. Trade with them. Create wealth. What do we do? We send all our wealth overseas. Well, yeah, and instead of trading, uh, we put sanctions on countries to make sure everybody's poor and angry, and then that, you know, festers a bunch of hate, and then, you know... We, we then, then we're shocked that, you know, when we go in to liberate them, nobody there likes us because they've been dying for 10 years. Like in Iraq, the sanction killed more than 200,000 people, according to uh, the U.N.'s numbers. And they asked, there was an interview with Madeleine Albright where they asked her if that was worth it. And she said, yeah, uh, we think it, we think that was worth it. That, that was children under five years old who died because the sanctions prevented uh, basic medical um, stuff from going in there. So... That's another thing Ron Paul brings up is that sanctions are an act of war, and if you trade freely with people, if, if people are well off, right, they, they don't want to go to war. If people look around and their family's happy and they're making you know a decent wage and they live in a decent house, they're not going to want to go to war. They're not going to become terrorists. Uh, well, they're not going to want to risk losing the wealth that they have. Right, what they have. They? But when yeah, when people have nothing, they have nothing to lose. Except so. in America. We're the only country that has more wealth than any... Well, Presumably, each indiv the individuals here have more wealth per capita than any other country in the world. We'd love to go to war. You know, my son just got back from India. One of the things that really amazed him was that how even the poorest of us here in America have so much more than the regular people in, in India do. We have to come to the realiza realization that Americans are not the only people that deserve life and liberty in the world. I mean, I'm all for... Everyone deserves it. Iraqis, they don't deserve it from us, though. They don't deserve us to go in there and impose our liberties on them. Because this, they were not This is something that we've been doing now for democracy. over 100 years with the, with the policies of uh, the United States is to go out and export democracy. We saw it under uh, the Theodore Roosevelt. You see it under the what happened with the Banana Republics down there in Central America, how we went in and actually used our military to help topple their governments to impose our democracy. Uh, and then again, you know, President Bush uh, with Iraq actually saying that we had a, a moral duty to go in there and free those people and give them democracy. I, I, I don't know. Do you see a moral duty to do that in the Constitution? No, I don't see a moral duty anywhere. I mean, well, even a religious moral duty. Look at how free they ended up. Yeah, they're real free now. <laughs> they're free to die. Well, yeah, just like it's, I mean, it's our responsibility to defend 
liberty and prosperity in the United States, right? Actually, not in the United States, in our neighborhoods, right? As, as locally as possible. It's our responsibility to defend our own. And so it's if other people don't don't choose to do that for themselves, no one can do it for them. You guys realize we've been at this for 45 minutes and we haven't taken a single phone call yet. We've got some people waiting on the lines. Oh. You, you want to take some phone calls this morning? Well, we don't have to. I mean, we can just talk. It's up to you. Should um, we have a democracy vote here? Yeah, all those, all those <laughs> yeah. in favor of uh, going to... But it is voluntary, phone. though. It is. Yeah, right. absolutely. I have a gun and I say phone calls. 